Hi folks, I'm Kevin Roth and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Please hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when new videos like this come up. And you can also click on my website, kevinroth.org, for more information about what I do and who I am and events coming up and all that kind of stuff. Today's video is for those people who are thinking about learning a new musical instrument and are wondering about picking up the dulcimer. This video is also for people who play three string dulcimer but want to know about playing four equidistant string dulcimer. So I'm going to try and pack a lot of information into a short amount of time for you. First of all, I want to tell you that there's a lot of information on the dulcimer on Google. There are Facebook pages like uh, Discovering Dulcimer, Support the Mountain Dulcimer, Dulcimer Lore. There's a magazine called the Dulcimer Player News. There's lots and lots of builders all over the country, really all over the world. All you need to do these days is, of course, Google them. There are two types of dulcimers. One is called a hammer dulcimer, which is in a trapezoidal shape. It's sort of a forerunner of the piano, and it's played with little mallets. Uh, that's not the dulcimer I'll be talking about today, but there is a whole world of hammer dulcimer players. This is called the mountain or Appalachian dulcimer. It comes, obviously, from the mountains. It's a forerunner of the zither. Lots of interesting history on it. This dulcimer has frets that are only under the melody string. This is a sort of a relatively new dulcimer that was a copy of a Kentucky dulcimer, an old-style Kentucky dulcimer. This was built for me by my friend Ron Ewing. So you have the melody strings that are together, you have the middle string, and you have the bass string. I have this tuned D, 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 okay? If you don't read music, don't worry about any of this technical stuff. It's super easy to find on the internet, and there's lots of teachers as well, my, me being one of them. Uh, but if you've played the xylophone in elementary school, you can play the dulcimer. It's not only a super easy instrument, an affordable instrument, uh, but the dulcimer community is very open and very giving in helping other people uh, learn how to play, they even have festivals. So it's a, it's a really, it's a great community and a beautiful instrument. I've been playing this for almost 50 years. This is tuned in DDD, -D -D, which is called bagpipe. And because the frets are only under the melody string, you can only play, obviously, a melody, and then the other two are what they call drones. But the fretting scale of a traditional mountain dulcimer is very, very easy. It's like the white notes of the piano or the do-re-mi scale. So you have... So it's super easy. Later, like in the 70s, 80s, they started to add one and a half fret, which gives you the, the minor and the six and a half fret. So if you have that one and a half and six and a half fret on your dulcimer, and most come that way these days, it sounds like this. It's super easy to play because your hands are in this position, and unlike the guitar or ukulele or other instruments, because there's a limited amount of notes, there's a limited amount of mistakes you can make, which is really good. On the dulcimer, of course, if you hit a wrong note, you just move your finger up one fret or down one fret, and you have it corrected. So this kind of a dulcimer was usually played with a little stick called a noter and a goose quill, but I'm gonna be playing it with just a very thin fender pick, and this is sort of a traditional sound of a uh, Appalachian dulcimer with an old song called Old Joe Clark. So it's, it's super simple. Um, usually there's tablature in music. Uh, it's written out by number of frets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so forth and so on and oft times the musical notation come with it. But if you don't read music, you don't need to. There's an old expression, there ain't no notes on a dulcimer, you just play it. So dulcimers come in all shapes and sizes. They have uh, this standard dulcimer, and then they have things like this uh, backpacking dulcimer, which is also made by my buddy Ron Ewing. Um, this has four strings as well, but they're separated. They're equidistance, and the frets of course, or across the entire fretboard. So you can play things like. 
But because the frets are across the entire board, you can also do chords. And they're basically, there's seven modal tunings, but there's three that most people use, which is called Mixolydian, Ionian, or a minor tuning called Aeolian. Mixolydian and Ionian are major tunings. Again, don't get confused by all that. It's just really simple. Uh, this is tuned D, A, D, D. This is considered sort of a soprano dulcimer. Then they have a baritone dulcimer, which is lower. They have a standard dulcimer, and they have a bass dulcimer. They have lots of variations of dulcimers as well because as the dulcimer has evolved over time, uh, builders have come along and added different kind of creative, neat things. Unlike a piano, which is sort of looks kind of like a piano all the time, or a guitar, which looks and sounds like a guitar, dulcimers come in different shapes and sizes. And even in the Smithsonian Institute, when you look at the history of builders, they're still built very differently. So it's sort of always been a, a, sort of like an open canvas to paint on. This dulcimer is one that's my signature instrument. I call it the wink dulcimer because I use it for subtle playing and meditation. Uh, this has four strings. It has the one and a half fret and the six and a half fret. The sound holes are kind of cosmic and you can also plug it in, which I'm going to do in just a little bit. So this part of the video is where I'm going to show you that if you play a three string, which is a double melody type, uh, it has um, one sound, but if you separate the strings into four equidistance, it has a whole nother sound. A lot of people are very afraid of going to four separate strings, but you don't need to, and I'll demonstrate why. So this is tuned D, A, D. Um, again, this is called the Wink Dulcimer, and I use this for something I call dulcy meditation with a lot of my students and clients. It's made of redwood and cherry, which has a very mellow, beautiful sound, and of course the sound holes sort of have that cosmic, relaxing, spiritual experience to them. Uh, this is manufactured for me by the Dulcimer Shop in Mountain View, Arkansas, and the sound hole designs are by my friend Robert Worth, so it's a combination of a lot of different fun stuff and it has a really beautiful sound so strumming it and this is called a mid-sized dulcimer a regular sized dulcimer you know um or if you were to finger pick it it has a very nice mid-range, a nice bottom, and a nice treble range. Most books and most teachers teach three string style, meaning the double melody strings together. But if you loosen one of the strings and you move it over to the other notch, which most dulcimers come with, they do come with grooves usually so that you can separate the strings, and you move the other string, the, the, uh, the third string, over, then you'll be in what's called a four string position, which looks like this. Okay, so you still have a melody string, but now you have an extra string here, and we're gonna tune this up. And the tuning usually is D on the melody, and D on the second string, and then A on the third string, and D on the bass. So the advantage is that on a three string style, you'd be fretting these two strings together, so you would be getting this kind of a sound. But when you separate the string, you can now let this second string ring and only fret the first string, and now you have a fuller sound. So if you were to play old Joe Clark as a three string style, it would sound like this. And as a four equidistant, it sounds like this. So it expands the sound of it because you have one extra string you can work with. You can also play the melody on the bass string.
and there's lots of chords. So the only difference is really that you have this one extra string right here that is now tuned any way you want, but is usually tuned the same as the melody string. And the cool thing is, is you can now retune the melody string to any note you want, and this string will still allow you to be in the D-A-D tuning. Okay? Uh, when you finger pick something like this particular instrument, like the wink, you can get really beautiful sounds, which are very meditative, like... It has nice sustain, and you can play traditional songs, or you can make up your own songs, you can play things like Summer of the Rainbow. And with that one and a half and six and a half fret, you have a lot more music that you can work with. But still, if you hit a wrong note, you can always move your finger down a fret or up a space. And that will make um, all the difference in the world, unlike the guitar, where you have to kind of work through a lot of different um, notes to get to the right one. So I'm going to plug this in. And now you can put it through an amplifier and put it through effects and have it sound any way you want, which is really kind of cool. So amplified, this, this particular dulcimer, the wink, sounds like... So because it's a good pickup, it sounds just like the dulcimer sounds acoustically. And I have lots of little knobs on there where I can put heavy reverb or um, echo or all kinds of stuff and I can plug it through different kinds of systems to make it sound basically like anything I want. So you have a really simple beautiful instrument that you can do a lot with. Early on there were traditional players like Gene Ritchie, uh, John Jacob Niles, Paul Clayton. You can hear a lot of their music on Folkway Records. Then in the 70s, uh, people came along like Joni Mitchell and Richard Freenia, um, and not quite as popular people like myself, uh, Neil Hellman, Doug Birch, Joella Lapidus, and we were all contemporary players. And then later on, people began to come along and do things like jazz and classical and Baroque and all kinds of things. So the dulcimer is only limited as far as you want to take it. One of the things that I do and that I teach is this thing called dulcy meditation, which is very simple. And you can just chill out when you play it. Uh, there's a certain philosophy and technique that I teach, of course. But I use the dulcimer and have always used the dulcimer as a meditative instrument to sort of chill out which is why this wink is sort of made with stars and planets because I'm in to all kinds of interesting things from Buddhism to uh, all kinds of spiritual and, and fun kinds of things. Dulcimer co can cost you anywhere from probably around 400 up to three, four, five thousand. 5,000. I would avoid getting any of the cheap ones from China. You get what you pay for. There are lots of different builders who have different styles. Um, if you write to me, I can recommend many of them to you. Uh, lucky for you guys that dulcimers are usually built now very well and fretted correctly. Back when I started to play in 1972, it was like iffy if they got the notes right, uh, the frets right. But the dulcimer has evolved. It's really an industry now. And it's a lovely instrument to play. So if you're thinking of picking up an instrument and you want to learn something easy and affordable and beautiful and is just like a canvas to paint on, I can't recommend the Mountain Dulcimer more highly to you than any other instrument that I know or that I play. It really is a beautiful, magical instrument. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to hearing from you. And most of the Dulcimer players are sort of older. We're looking to get younger people into playing the Dulcimer too. Uh, Lots of rock and roll people use the dulcimer as well, Cindy Lauper, the Rolling Stones. So it's still evolving very nicely. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.